Uh, hi everybody. Uh, uh, today I'm going to uh, talk about uh, iPhone automation. As you can see, like I'm trying like all the different things that that is on my uh, title. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous, so if you guys, <laughs> yeah, like I feel like I'm shaking already, like with all the people looking at me. Okay, so let's get started. So background. So why uh, why do we need the like, uh, automation for the device? And so we have a lot of different apps coming, and for Trulia we have iPhone app, we have iPad, we have Android. Actually, there's another one. The Android tablet is coming also. I didn't put it in. And then the mobile site itself for all the people that who don't use. Android and I, iPhone, or oh, all the all the other ones, and then yeah, more more phone device coming in a very short time, and then our mobile traffic keep like increasing. So what do we do? What do we do to solve this problem? Okay, to help to maintain our sanity, we automate some of our devices. So let's do automation. It will solve everything. That's what people think. So to be honest, try to make things stable so that um, everything goes out, uh, at least uh, before going to QA. It will be have, have a certain standard before they actually put their hands on it. It may not decrease their work, but yeah, it will make it stable. Um, now let's go back to the topic. So after watching uh, Pete, Hoxson, Hoxson. I don't know how to pronounce his name actually. Uh, presentation about Frank. Uh, so I was very hopeful. Wow, that's like a perfect tool for automating iPhone app, native app. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, that's what we need. Then okay, I type and follow the online documentations. Wow, hooray! Then, da la, we have the. Uh, Frank set up. I think uh, if you have tried Frank, then you know that this page actually represent like you successfully set up uh, the uh, Frank framework. Okay, now let's uh, do some more coding and then I'll make my first test case. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually uh, if you Google search like hit the wall, that's the first image come up. <laughs> and yeah. I hit the wall. Uh, what happened? So yeah, this is like what happened like when you uh, try to run the uh, Ruby test. Use Cucumber. So I have two options, actually. Keep on debugging Frank, Ruby scripts, possibly UI spec, and all the libraries. Or Let's go to the bottom, like UI spec. Let's see what happened. Okay, yeah, then I start searching, typing again, add the libraries, adding more dependencies, and then I had header files, and more header files. <laughs> okay, linking error. If you have been dealing with uh, iPhone apps before, then you know like linking errors. Like, so you're lucky that uh, you're doing like Ruby or what else, Python or like all the other uh, languages that do not need compile. And, and, and yeah. files, add some test code. Looks promising, really promising. So if you look back, then you'll see I have all the flash. So what happened is if you put those code in and then uh, on your, eye, your phone, the button itself, it will flash. And then you see, okay, yeah, seems okay. So I turn all the flash uh, command to touch. Let's touch it, see what happens. Bang, I hit another wall. <laughs> so uh, either result in no low reactions, like it's not doing anything, or I have this uh, uh, exact uh, bad access error. So. What's that, what should I do? 
That's what I do, like, yeah, basically. What should, what should I do? <laughs> like, is there anything out there just work out of the box? <laughs> yeah, if I'm doing web uh, automation on the phone. But, uh, so I, need, I really need something that just work, like, okay, come on. So I talked to a friend of mine who works in Apple, actually, in the, uh, the mobile me team. And then so the conversation goes like this. So what do you do? Like how do you like, automate your, your software, like uh, native apps on iPhone or iPad? So they said, use JavaScript. I was like, really, JavaScript? JavaScript, that one that runs on the browser? They say, yeah. So uh, the conclusion is come up to uh, the UI automation from Apple. So they have this framework actually in there already uh, using in instruments. There's an application call. So, um, so there's a guy called Alex Vollmer, and he has like excellent, excellent blog uh, about how to set it up. If you're interested, go that route. So I follow his instructions. I add some uh, accessibility labels. Uh, set up the instruments template, and then uh, write some JavaScript. Actually, yeah, just pure JavaScript. So for the instruments, uh, it will interpret your JavaScript uh, completely. Uh, even you use like import or any, any other things. And then, yeah, then you start, uh, yeah, it's a little bit strange when I try to do it. Actually, uh, the record button will start your script. It's not the playback, there's no playback, it's just recording. So the reasoning behind this is because uh, they are trying to record the, uh, the CPU usage or memory leaks and things like that. Actually, that's what the tool is really for, to, uh, to do like profiling for your app. And it works, it actually works. Like, ta-da, okay, good. Then, yeah, there's always a catch, come on. So what happened? So let's integrate that, <laughs> all the tests with Jenkins. So let's see like, how to do it. Like, yeah, another wall. Yeah, same wall. There's no good way to kick off the test from command line and then to integrate your tests uh, with Jenkins or results with the Jenkins. So uh, actually, uh, the time that I'm trying it, there's no good way, but seems like uh, starting from iOS 5 beta 4 that you can actually kick off your uh, tests or your um, uh, yeah, your JavaScript test or your instruments from uh, command line. But uh, I haven't tried out yet. You can, you guys can uh, explore it, maybe a little bit more, if anything want to, uh, anyone wanted it. So, so what happened? And then I banged my head on the table or the wall again. So then I found key. So what is key? So key is keep it functional. Actually, uh, it's not I personally find it, is uh, from one of our developers because I'm talking to him like, oh shit, I, I just uh, keep like hitting all these walls and like how do how are we going to like automate this? So then he told me that recently uh, Square, they do uh, uh, online or oh, iPhone iPad bill payment. They open up this uh, uh, their test framework called Keith. Keep it functional. And yeah, by Square, Eric uh, Firestone. Pretty, pretty solid uh, documentation. It's not too bad. But uh, you probably will need to have some uh, experience with uh, iPhone app to like, get it running. But still, simple enough. Couple linking errors later. Yay! It actually works. And then, simple enough setup. And then with uh, instruction to start the testing command line. That's very important for us because we want to integrate all these tests into our CI tool in Jenkins. And then it actually exit uh, after the test finished. Because uh, one thing I run into for uh, UI automation uh, with uh, the uh, instruments is it will just keep running once you kick it off and then like, there's no good way to like, stop it. And I like search and look it up online. The, they use uh, some people use Apple Script, which is like you automate 
the UI of the instruments tool to turn off the script. So yeah, it's another can of worm that I don't want to touch. Then you, it outputs the results to console or a file if you want to change it. So the results are not CI ready format. It's not like in uh, uh, in JUnit format or, or, or test ng format. But that's okay. If that's the only problem I have to deal with, that's like, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. So the final solution is use Keith and then add some uh, accessibility labels to like all the text field, button, and view. And then set the uh, is accessibility element to, like, to yes, like for uh, your view or your button. And it, um, or actually, it's your view. Uh, I actually uh, take one thing from Frank, is the symbiote. So what happened is that you can actually look at the element labels from, uh, from the browser using a symbiote. So it, that's the uh, one thing that I take out from there. And then uh, Wexim, uh, that one is help you to launch the, uh, the app from command line and then kick off the test. And then uh, at the end, I, I modify the uh, key flop output so that uh, it can generate like JUnit result formats. So uh, that's it.